In Java, we have these two conditional operators that you can use to perform operations on Boolean expressions. We have the conditional end, which is written using two ampersands. And this other one is the conditional or, which is written using two pipes. On your keyboard, the pipe can be found along with a backslash. Just press shift plus backslash to add a pipe. The conditional end operator allows you to operate on two Boolean expressions so that it will return true only if both expressions are true. While an operation using the conditional or will return true if at least one of the expressions is true. In this example, we have x which is equal to 6 and the condition here in the if statement asks if x modulo 2 is 0 and if x modulo 3 is also equal to 0. So in this case, both of these conditions are true since 6 is divisible by both 2 and 3, which means that the program will end up printing this message. So let's test that out. And there it is. However, if we change x to 4, then this means that only the first expression will be true and the other one will be false. And when using the conditional end, as long as one of them is false, then the whole thing returns false. So let's test that out. And we see that nothing gets printed. On the other hand, the conditional OR operator will return true as long as at least one of them is true. So let's change this to two pipes instead to turn it into a conditional OR operation. And let me just change the message to x is divisible by either 2 or 3. So now even though the second expression is false, the whole thing will still return true because this other one is true. So let's test that out. And here we see the new message. It's a common practice to assign Boolean expressions to Boolean variables when you have a long combination of expressions. It helps make things like your if statements look a little less cluttered. So here we could create a Boolean variable. Let's call it div by two or three. And then this is going to be equal to, and then we just transfer this entire expression here. And now inside the parentheses, we can just use the variable instead. So this expression gets evaluated first and returns either true or false, depending on the value of x. And then that result gets assigned to the variable. And then the if statement just checks whether the value of it is true or false. Notice that we don't have to say equals equals true. We could do that, but that would be redundant. Because this already evaluates to either true or false anyway. So, for example, if it evaluates to true, then there's no need to check if true is equal to true because it's already true. So we can just go ahead and remove that. And if we test this out, you will see that it still works. Now, what if we wanted to change our program so that the if statement checks if x is neither divisible by 2 nor by 3. So let's change this message first. And then I'll change x to be equal to 5 instead. So now this expression will return false because 5 modulo 2 is not 0 and 5 modulo 3 is not 0 as well. 
So what we can do here is, instead of writing an entirely new Boolean expression, let's just change the condition in our if statement. Let's just make it say, if div by 2 or 3 is equal to false. So if we test this, we will get our new message. And there it is. But there is a better way to write this, because this is also redundant. Instead, we can use the logical complement operator. In Java, this operator is represented by the exclamation point. It is an operator that inverts a Boolean value. If the Boolean is true, then inverting it returns false. If it's false, then inverting it returns true. To invert a Boolean, you place an exclamation point before it. So now we shouldn't compare this to false anymore. So what exactly is happening here? We have x, which is equal to 5. It's not divisible by 2, and it's not divisible by 3, so this whole thing returns false. Therefore, the value of our Boolean variable is false. But here in the if statement, we are inverting it using the logical complement operator. So the value of this is false. But then we have this exclamation point here, which inverts the Boolean, thereby giving us true. So if we test this, then we should still see the same message. Sometimes you don't need to completely evaluate a conditional operation, depending on the result of one of the earlier expressions. So let's take a look at this example. We have y, which is equal to 10, and then we have a conditional OR operation that asks if y is equal to 10 or if y is equal to 9. So if we test this, we get true. But the program didn't actually finish checking this entire thing. In this case, Java evaluates this first expression and gets a result of true. And because this is an OR operation, there's really no need for us to evaluate the rest. Because with OR operations, as long as you have at least one true, then the whole thing is true. So Java won't even bother to check the rest. This is called short circuit evaluation. It stops the evaluation right away because it's already sure of what the result is. The same thing goes for end operations. Let's change the value of y to 9 and change this to a conditional end. So now when we check the first expression, we get false. And because this is an end operation, we already know that the final result will be false. Because in end operations, all of them must return true. Once you get a false, then that's it. There's no way this entire operation will end up returning a true anymore. So at this point, Java short circuits the evaluation as well. And when we test this, we get false. You can combine ORs and ENDs to make more complex expressions, such as in this example here. Here in this example, Z is 15, and we use Z in this combined OR and END operation. But how does this get evaluated? Does the program evaluate this OR operation first, and then do an END with this expression? Or does it evaluate this end expression first and then do an or with this one? Because we will get a different result here depending on the precedence of our operations. If we evaluate this or operation first, then that part will give us a true because 15 is greater than 0. And then if we evaluate this next expression, 
then this gives us a false, because 15 modulo 2 is not equal to 0. So now we have a true and a false, which gives us false. But then if we evaluate this first expression on its own, we will get a true. And because it is followed by the OR operator, then we short circuit the rest of the evaluation and immediately return true. So which one will Java follow? In Java, the AND operator takes precedence. So this part gets evaluated first. 15 is not less than 0, so this end operation gives us a false. But then, 15 is greater than 0, so this gives us true. And because this is an OR, then the whole expression returns true. And if we test this out, we do in fact see that we get true. To override that precedence, we can use parentheses. If you want the OR operation to be evaluated before the END operation, then place it inside parentheses. So now if we test this, then we get false.